Well, I'm James Anderson Harwood, born 5th of February 1927. I had three sisters and a brother. Starting off with the oldest, my brother was uh, Douglas Owen Harwood. He was a, uh, a musician and <clears throat> a professional harmonica player. And that's where I inherited the talent. Oh yes, my middle setter Kathleen Victoria, that's a posh, posh name isn't it? I think it suited her because she went to St Hilda's School in Mosman Park and they were all pretty snobby. She was always beautifully dressed, had a nice pair of legs as I recall. <laughs> and she told me a lot about life, I, as, so I, I learnt about women and men. And as one does as much as growing up. So uh, um, we used to go and lie on the grass near the South Perth Ferry and listen to the beautiful music that used to be played by the visiting American sailors that were on here on submarines and uh, ships. Having a, a furlough, they converted the Swan River Rowing Club. The launching pads were made into a dance floor and they had a loudspeaker and the music used to waft over to South Perth and we too used to listen to this beautiful music, the sound of Glenn Miller, Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, Harry James, it's Bing Crosby, all used to waft across and, and uh, that's when my love for music was developed. Well, I took up sailing. My dad bought me a cadet dinghy and made me a junior member of the Royal Perth Yacht Club, which was down here at the foot of the Men Street Jetty. But before I touch on that, let me tell you that on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning, I used to get sixpence, pocket money, and we'd go to the Grand Theatre in Murray Street and watch a film. Hop along Cassidy, William Boyd, and uh, the cheering kids as the, as the crooks and the goodies got together. And, so Hopalong was my hero and he used to, he used to uh, ride a wonderful horse called Trigger. I think it was Trigger, a white one. That reminds me too of another incident that happened at school. But coming back to, uh, <coughs> on the Saturday, we'd go to the flicks and it used to be fashionable. But being a smart ass, I suppose, excuse the expression, but uh, this particular Saturday, I'd got a new pair of, of shoes and a new suit, hand sewn by Mr. Quatt, the tailor, who was in Levinson's building, Hay Street. Uh, and uh, uh, we'd go to the flicks and, and, and we'd have a cigarette at, in the interval, being smart, and we found that the girls liked the look of it. So, we put on a bit of dog, you know, puffing away, thinking we were very smart. And on this particular day, on the way home, just before the ferry touched the wharf in Men Street, I jumped. It was on the Mayflower, the small vessel, and I missed, and I fell in the water. School cap on, best suit, best shoes, and I could see death coming very quickly 
because I, I could see I was going to be crushed. Thank God there was a big Australian soldier standing there. Seeing what happened, he leant down and dragged me out. I didn't have time to thank him. I just ripped down the jetty and ran home. And my mother said to me, what have you been doing? I said, I fell in. And that was another thing that happened in Seymour too. I, in, I was given a gun. But anyway, uh, I had this uh, 38 revolver and I was very keen to show it to my cousin who lived in Subiaco. In those days, it was a case of taking the tram, uh, taking the ferry across the river, getting on a tram to uh, High Street and then getting off and getting another tram and walking down to Roberts Road. And of course, mindful of the movies of Hopalong Casty, I was very keen to show Mike my new gun. I took it and I had it in my pocket in my sports coat, wrapped up in a handkerchief. And when I got there, uh, Mike, who the Maley family had a large family, they lived in what they called a sleep out. The boys had a big sleep out there at the back and big old colonial home it was. And I showed it to Mike and he said, gee, I must show that to Jerry. Jerry was 15, Mike and I were 12. And Jerry came out and he looked at it and he said, gee whiz, he said, I think Dad's got some bullets that'll fit that. So he went inside and he got some packet of bullets and he put five in the breech. And he said, I wonder if it works. And he put it up in the end and clicked like that, nothing happened. Then he put it to Mike's head and he went click and nothing happened. Then he put it up in the air and it went off. Well, we were shocked. I was absolutely stunned. He was. Uh, I put it in my pocket, wrapped it in my handkerchief and went home as fast as I could and buried it in the backyard in an old post box wrapped in an oily rag.